Hey everyone, happy reading. I haven't talked to you in a hot minute about any of the books that I've actually been reading, so let's go ahead and actually talk about one of those books. <laughs> Today we're going to delve into To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. been around for a hot minute now, which is kind of cool to think about. Um, her Wayfarers books won for the Best Series Award at last year's Hugo's, and she has been kind of just a joy to have in the community. Um, mostly I really have liked her stuff. None of it has really been that like perfect five-star read for me, but I love how she's generally speaking very hopeful. For me, the fact that her characters tend to err on the side of kindness and that her stories feel like they're building towards a good place, right? Like the universe that they live in is a place where good things can happen even if they're not happening now. There are just moments, especially I think in this kind of climate that we've had for the past couple of years that feel like that's what I need right? I need that kind of science fiction and fantasy that's going to make me feel, make me remember why I choose to believe that people are good. When I went to the Hugos and then we decided on the bookstore and everybody else got one, I was like, well, I could resist or I could not. <laughs> And so I picked up this copy um, from Hodges Figgis in Dublin when I was at Worldcon and of course basically read it immediately after once I got home. This is a really interesting novella um, and I think it's going to be one that is, you know, the hit or miss for people. Um, for me, I really liked it. I really liked a lot of the different thoughts in it. It basically follows a, a team of scientists on an exploratory mission out past our solar system. Um, they're sent on kind of a crowdsourced science exploration mission where they're going and they are exploring other planets, gathering research data, trying to find kind of new sources of life and, and new ways of understanding the universe. While back at home, things are breaking down, you know, the politics is going crazy, climate change is starting to really significantly damage populations. Um, it, it's a really interesting backdrop, I think, for the story to know that they have left this kind of conflict behind, especially because they are people who are, by all intents and purposes, going to be going home, right? That is the understanding as part of their mission is they have this, like, cryotech so they can go home. But it has this in interesting distance from the modern politics that their, their counterparts on Earth are living through because by the time they get home, even with those kind of like cryo freezing and things like that, everyone they know and love will be dead. They are coming home to a place that they've had no say over, where they don't get an input on what the climate policies are going to look like or what the government structures might look like. Um, and so that is the first really interesting dynamic about this book, I think, is that we're watching these scientists try to make the world a better place while knowing that the world that they observe is never one they're going to live in again. And that's really interesting, um, just kind of as a basic premise. So they're on this ship, they go and they are going to new planets. They go to four over the course of the story. And each one has a really different setup. They are not all good places. And so the story has a couple of different themes. Um, I would say the one that struck me most was that it feels so much like a love letter to scientific discovery. The characters in it are, are working together for this common discovery, this common quest for knowledge. Um, you know, they don't always get along perfect, but they're, they're there and they're working as a unit kind of in awe of the things that they discover. Like, and I love that there's that kind of focus on the joy of science. Um, there's a, an interesting thread throughout the story about, uh, about loneliness and loss. Um, you know, what does it mean to be somebody who is going through these, these gorgeous, uh, you know, awe-inspiring discoveries, while at the same time having left everything you know behind, um, knowing that you have 
no control over what you're coming back to, right? They're, they're coming back to an earth that is essentially kind of like a, a stranger in a strange land situation that they will not recognize the earth that they go home to at all. And I think Chambers does a good job of delving into how that might feel and how that might be kind of a persistent feeling in the background, even as you feel these really high emotional moments. Um, you know, that is one thing that I will say about Becky Chambers is I think her emotional arcs and development of her stories are fantastic. The story itself is in a kind of mishmash journal crew log kind of setup. Um, it is written by one of the members of the crew to whomever might find their data. Some of those moments are really, really good. Some of them are a little slower. Um, I'll admit I'm, I'm not always a fan of first person narratives, um, mostly because I really want to see a lot of emotional kind of change. Um, and sometimes for me that doesn't read as well when it's coming from just one voice, especially in something as small as this story, but I found that it did generally work. Um, I should say also, you know, for me sometimes I need a little bit more tonal variation than what I got in this story. Um, the narrator's voice is very consistent, but not necessarily one that clicked quite right with me. In some ways the crew kind of abdicates some control over their own lives at the end of the story. And I think you're either going to like how that goes or you you really won't. Um, that being said, I when I first read the story and I got to the ending, I wasn't sure how I felt about it. It took me a while to decide that I kind of liked the, the poetic aspect of how they come to their end conclusion. Um, it wasn't something that immediately felt like, oh, this was the perfect ending. It was one that you know, after 48 hours, 72 hours of thinking about the story, I was like, you know, I kind of actually in retrospect like that. Um, I should go back and, and reread it at some point. It's just a little too soon uh, for me to go back and reread it quite yet. Um, and I guess on reread, I will decide if I like that ending more or less given, given some time and reflection. Um, overall, I found it really enjoyable. I think it's, you know, really beautifully written. I love a lot of the thematic elements. The characters are just kind and it's so refreshing. Um, you know, I, it has a lot of those emotionally satisfying things where it, it feels like a healing moment in, in stories. You know how stories can feel like that where they feel like they're just, they're smoothing some of the rough parts of your life. Um, there was an element of that to this. I'm, I feel like I'm not describing that quite right. Um, I loved its I loved its commitment to science and discovery as just kind of this good in and of itself. And just the joy that Chambers seemed to take in drawing these characters together. But I'm really interested to hear what you you think about it. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts, especially about the ending, because I, I know how controversial that has been, and I'm not surprised at how controversial it's been. I just, I have thoughts, um, and I want to hear yours. <laughs> if you've read To Be Taught, if fortunate, let me know. Let me know, of course, all of the good things that you thought about it, all of the bad things you thought about it, all of the Dear God, Brie, what did you make of X, Y, and Z? I, of course, will be picking up more Becky Chambers. I would love to see her write a follow-up to this, actually. Um, I don't know if she'll do that for us, but if she ever did, I would, I would definitely be interested in picking that up. You guys know the drill. Comment, like, and subscribe. Tell me how you're feeling. What's going on in your life? What are you reading? Uh, go ahead and check me out on Twitter and Instagram. I hang out there sometimes. And if you want to help pick out my books for my TBRs for the month, you can go on over to my Patreon. I hope you all are having a lovely, lovely week. Talk to you later. Bye.